task. May I be so curious as to ask his Yes, 
emptiness of the tears. If I asked you, can I kiss you? Say, what will my pretty miss do? I shall scream, scream, scream. Protective shell, can I admit you one hit? Will my fly some bumps and beauty? Let our suitor do his duty. Though his lap is very large, dear. Sit right on if there's no chance, dear. Will you sit? No, I shan't. Will you sit?
But it'll grow, Mrs. Salberry. It'll grow. Oh, I dare say you will in our bitters and our drink. They're a waste of time, these workhouse boys. Got small to keep them their worth. Still, you men think you know best. What are you going to do with him? There's an expression of melancholy on his face that's rather interesting. He could make a delightful coffin follower. I don't mean a regular coffin follower to follow the grown-ups, but for the children's practice, it'd be very nice to have a follower in proportion, my dear. A superb effect, the more you think about it. For once, just for once, you might have had a decent idea. Very well then, boy, what's your name? Oliver, Oliver Twistle. A singular name. I am, Anne. and one of my own choosing. Are yours, Mr. Bumble? Mine, Mrs. Selberry. And how's that, Mr. Bumble? Well, the boy's mother came to us destitute, brings the child into the world, takes one look at him, and probably dies without even affording any address. Oh dear, dear. Well, Oliver Twist, do you think you could look like that, that gentleman up there? Maybe. If I had a black hat. Never mind the black hat. Ah, oh, the boy's quite right. Get away, Topper. These things must be done proper and correct. Henry, Henry, really? You take twice as long to do anything as anybody else. Yes, yes. For once, Henry, you've had a decent idea. Do you think you can keep that expression for a long time, boy, with a crowd watching you? Yes, Mum, I think so. <laughs>
one. Give them to him. Have you done? Yes, ma'am. Good. Hey, look at the bed. Charlotte, don't you send me a gold kid? Now then, Oliver Twist, your bed's under the counter. I don't suppose you don't suppose you might sleep in long coffins, do you? Well, it doesn't much matter whether you do or you don't, because you can't sleep nowhere else. <laughs> Shut 
silly thing. Everyone let him alone. His father left him alone. His mother left him alone. They all left him alone. Upset dear old kind old Noah. Hey, Charlotte. Not now, you are a one. <coughs> so, workers, how's your mother? You leave my mother out of this. She's dead. Oh, what did she die of, workers? Shortage of breath. <laughs> Never you mind. Oh, but I do mind. Well, you better not say any more. See? Better not. Better not. If you don't mind, the cheek of it, the workhouse cheek of it. My mother would say she was a nice and she was. You know, workers. It can't be out now, and of course, it couldn't have been up then. And I'm sorry for it and all that. But you must know, workers, your mother was a regular, right down bad one. What did you say? A regular, right down bad one. <coughs> and it was a good thing she died when she did, or she would have been doing hard labour in prison, as like as not. <laughs>
Sarah now. Haven't you ever seen a gin? <laughs> no, I haven't. Tired? I've been running hard. Oh, I see. You must be running away from the beak. The what? Now, don't you tell me you don't know what the beak is, me flash mate. Isn't a beak what a bear's got? My eyes! Our green! A beak is a magistrate for your information. Angry? Starving. Got no mother? No. Father? No. Uh, lovely pair. More weather out today, uh, don't you think? Staying in London? Yes. Got any lodgings? No. Money? Not a farthing. <gasps> Do you live in London? <coughs> um, when I'm at home. I suppose you want a place to sleep tonight, don't you? Are you accommodated? No, I don't think so. Then accommodated you shall be, me old mate. There's a certain house and I have to know a respectable old gentleman that lives there. That'll give you lodgings for nothing. This is and that is, if any other bloke he knows introduces you. And does he know me? I should say he does. Not half he done. And some. <laughs> Who is this respectable gentleman then? Is he a charity gentleman? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that. Not exactly. But if I introduce someone, it's all right. On the account I happen to be a particular favourite of Mr. Fagin. Oh, by the way, that's his name, Mr. Fagin. And, um, if I'm introducing you to Mr. Fagin, I better know who you are, me old China player. I'm Oliver. Oliver Twist. And I'm Jack Dawkins, better known in among my more intimate friends as the Arthur Dodger. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Dawkins. Come to think of it, I ain't got no intimate friends. Still, what's the difference, me old pork sausage? You're coming with me. <laughs> Are you sure Mr. Fagin won't mind? Mind?
<laughs> well, I hope I shall have thought of your intimate acquaintance, my dear. All right, leave him alone. We're very glad to see you, Oliver, very. Charlie, draw up a tap near the fire for Oliver. Don't you take off those sausages. There, stale! Shut up and drink your gin. Oh, I see you're staring at the pocket handkerchief, say me, dear. There's quite a few of them, ain't there? We've just, uh, just hang them out for the wash, Oliver. The wash. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's all, Oliver, that's all. Is this a laundry then, sir? Well, not exactly, my dear. I well, suppose a laundry would be a very nice place to work indeed, but I am on a business it uh, pays a little better, don't it, boys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, Oliver. <laughs> You've got to pick a pocket or two, boys. You've got to pick a pocket or two.
Look. <laughs> now, I think you've all been all the work today, my dear. Oh, that's right. Hey, good boys, good boys. Don't you? What have you got? Come on, Wallace. Not as heavy as they might be, don't you, but very nicely made. Ingenious work, my hand, Wow, very ingenious, sir. <laughs> and what have you got, my dear? No threads. Well, they're very nice ones. But you uh, haven't embroidered them too well, don't you, Arnie? So we'll have to pick the initials out with your needles. <laughs> <laughs> you will need to learn how to do that too, whatever, my dear. Why any boys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, you left to learn how to make what looks like Dodger and Charlie. You'd like that, wouldn't you, my dear? Yes, please, Mr. Fagan, if you teach me. Why, oh, certainly, my boy. <laughs> no fee. Just make sure you do everything that Charlie and Dodger do. Make them your role models. Especially Dodger. He's going to be a right regular little Bill Sykes. <laughs> <laughs> Nanny, Oliver, is my handkerchief protruding from my pocket? Yes, sir. I can just see the corner. Well, why don't you see if you can take it without my feeling it? Like you saw the others do. Okay. <laughs> on your credit, a home and a profession, eh boys? <laughs> now then, to bed, all of you! There's a hard day's work ahead. You can sleep down here, Oliver, my dear. Don't you take your rent off in bed. Have a night, like Oliver. I'm afraid the earth will quench me in the sun. Do you think I could get up now, sir? 
Oh, certainly, my boy, certainly. There's a basin of water over by the fire. You can go and have a wash. But I had a wash yesterday, sir. Hope oh, today's your birthday. Wash! Clubby and slam! It's Nancy! Hiya, boys, the ladies are here. Well, then let's go and go behind. Where did you? All in moderation, my dear. Too much gin can be a dangerous thing for a pure little girl. And what's wrong with a drop of danger than Mr. Fagan after all that stuff? Even if it's we get around here. And who would deny us that small pleasure? Would you?
Vindua, Nancy, my dear, what do you say? And it won't do, so there's no use in trying it on, Fagan. And just what do you mean by that remark? What I say, Bill. Why, well, you're just the person for it. Don't do that when you're sending it about you. And that was it to me, but it's rather more no than yes with me, Bill. Oh, she'll go, Fagan. No, she won't, Fagan. Yes, she will, Fagan!
today is for me to decide. Thank you, Mrs. Bevel. How do you feel today, my boy? Much better, thank you, sir. May I stay here always, sir? If you wish, dear boy. If you wish. Now here's the doctor to see you. You're feeling a great deal better, are you not? Yes, thank you, sir. Yes, I know you are. You are too, aren't you? No, sir. Oh. No. He's not hungry, Mrs. Bedwin. No, doctor. Uh, you are feeling sleepy, though, aren't you? No, sir. Ah, I know you're not. Uh, not sleepy. Not thirsty either, are you? You know, if that boy's thirsty, I'll actually eat my head. Yes, sir, I am rather thirsty. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, very natural that you should be thirsty. <coughs> uh, you may give him a little tea, Mrs. Bedwin. Certainly, Doctor. May I get up now, please? I think you may, and take a little fresh air. Be sure that you don't let him get too warm, Mrs. Bedwin, but don't let him get too cold. Will you have the goodness? Yes, of course, Doctor. You'll be glad to be up again, Arthur. Doctor, do you notice the most extraordinary likeness between that boy's face and the portrait of my daughter Agnes? Can't say I do. I know two sorts of boys, mealy face and mealy face. And which is Oliver? Mealy. Where did he come from? Didn't I tell you? He was arrested for stealing my pocket handkerchief. What, eh? It was all my mistake, and when the shopkeeper told us what really happened, and he was released by the magistrate, I brought him here to make what amends I could. But I must confess, I find myself strangely attached to the child. He's deceiving you, my good friend. He's had a fever. What of it? Fevers are not peculiar to good people, are they? Bad people get fevers sometimes. He stole your pocket handkerchief. He will steal more. He didn't. Yes, what is it? The book short from the books then, sir. Ah, thank you. Now have some other books, dear. <coughs> hey, wait a moment. Oh dear, he's gone. And I particularly wish some books to return today. Send darling Oliver with them. He'll be sure to deliver them safely. You know, if he does, I'll eat my head. Yes, do let me take them for you, sir. Oh, um, oh very well, my boy. Very well, if you wish. You shall. Now I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to take these books and say that you've come to pay the £4.10 that Mr. Brownlow owes. He is £5. No need to rush, it's just down the road, but I shall expect you back <coughs> in ten minutes. Very good, sir. Now let us see, Mrs. Bedwin. Ten minutes. <laughs>
Thank you. 
sight I'm finding it hard to be nearly as black as they paint I breathe in the situation Can a fellow be a villain? Get myself a wife And a wife who could get some for me And come for me And go for me And go for me And nag at me The fingers she would wag at me The money she would take from me A misery she'd make of me I think I better think it out again With a wife you can keep Anyway I'd rather sleep anyway Left without anyone in the world And I'm starting from now So how to win friends And to influence people So how? <coughs> I'm reviewing The situation with friendliness as much as is befitting of my new estate. Good morrow to you magistrates! I think I better think it out of the So where should I go? Somebody. Who do I know? Nobody. All my dearest companions have always been and thieves. <coughs> so in my time of life, I should start turning over new leaves. I reveal the situation. If you want to eat, you've got to earn a bump. Is it such a humiliation? For a robber to perform an honest job So a job I'm getting possibly I wonder who my boss will be I wonder if he'll take to me What bonuses he'll make of me I'll start to take and finish late At normal rate and all but wait I think I better think it out again Well what happens when I'm 70 must come a time, 17, when you're old and it's cold and who cares if you live or you die. Your one consolation is the money you may have to do.
Ah, oh, marriage! And two weeks ago tomorrow it was done. Oh, it seems an age. I sold myself for six teaspoons, a pair of sugar tongs, and a milk pot. With a small quantity of second-hand furniture, it's 20 pounds cash. I went very reasonable. Cheap. Dead cheap. 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 You would have been dear at any price, and dear enough a price I paid for you. You are above know that. Ooh. Well, are you going to sit there snoring all day? I am going to sit here for as long as I think proper, madam. And although I was not snoring, I shall snore, gape, sneeze, laugh or cry as the humour strikes me. Such being my prerogative. Your prerogative? I said the word, man. The prerogative of a man is to command. <laughs> What's the prerogative of a woman in the name of goodness? To obey, madam. Your late unfortunate husband should have taught it to you, and then perhaps he might have been alive today. Oh, oh, and I wish he was. Oh, poor man. Oh, you are, darling. <laughs> Cry away, madam. It washes the eyes, opens the lungs, softens the temper. So cry away. Well, then what do you know of him? Ah, well, you see, this little trinket 
although it was a little broken, was passed on from the lad's dying mother to my beloved wife moments before she passed away. <laughs> the lad's dying mother, that is. <laughs> Not my wife. <laughs> Mrs. Bumble has been keeping on with it this entire time. You say that when he left your warehouse, he went to an undertaker's? Oh, yes, indeed. Mr. Salberry, the undertaker, took all of her away from us for five pounds. You mean to say he's holding like an animal? Uh, uh, well, actually, it, it was Mrs. Bumble who authorised the sale. <laughs> really? Then I will see to it that neither of you is employed in a situation of trust again. You may leave my house. Um, I hope that this uh, unfortunate little circumstance will not uh, deprive me of my brochure office. Indeed it will. And you may think yourself well off the sides. Oh, but it was all Mrs. Bumble! She would do it! That is no excuse. You were present on the occasion when the boy was sold, and indeed are the more guilty of the two in the eye of the law. For the law supposes that your wife acts under your direction. Well, if the law supposes that, and the law is an ass. If that's the eye of the law, then the law is a bachelor. And the worst I wish of it is that it's eye may be opened by experience! By experience! Take a look at this miniature. You see it's his. Why, that's Miss Agnes, sir. Yes, my daughter Agnes. I have every reason to suspect that Oliver was her child. Sir? I can't stay there any longer. If I had one of those men he would have done, you might have been so not with that reason either. I'm sorry if anyone's been rude to you. I can I help you in any way? I don't know. Can she be trusted? Yes, why? I'm a good little little old back to our fagin' to pay the morning left this house. You? Me, sir, I wish that I'd never been part of it. The boy mentioned you especially to a fool I came to you. Where is this place you speak of? Fagin's? That I can't tell you. Did you perhaps know that Oliver was possibly my grandchild? I didn't know nothing. All I knew was my orders. I had to get him back or suffer for it. You don't believe me? I don't want your pity. I had to come even though there were those who murdered him and you're not being here. Murder? But where is Oliver? Where is this Fagin's? I can't tell you, I just wanted you to know a little all of the safe. But what can I do about all of this? Why must you go back? What is the reason you can't tell me where he is? And why must you return to those people? I can call the grocery runners in a moment, and if you tell them what you've just told me, they will see to it that you come to no harm. Don't you understand? I won't go back there. I must go back there. Bro, right, how can I explain? See, back then is a man. I just can't leave him. See, you don't understand what it's like to love someone like that. I understand. My dear lady, you do excuse me, but I'm anxious about Oliver. How can you help me? Right. I won't tell you where he is, but I'll bring him to you. Not yet. No, no, that's too bad. Will you promise? I won't watch your fellows. I promise you solemnly. Then tonight, between 11 and 12, I'll walk on the London Bridge. I'll bring Oliver. <laughs>
wore a blue coat and a tall hat. Bill Sykes! It's Nancy! It's Nancy! Nancy! There he is! Stand back, Mark, number boy! Turn a leaf over, and who can tell what I may find? 